to Harry Men on the Inside. We've been asked again about some sharpening videos, so we're going to have a multi-part sharpening series here, starting today with a little bit of nomenclature and some quickie diagrams. Then we will go into machine sharpening, hand sharpening in the field, and all aspects of that. So, this is the basics. You were. Let me let me grab a knife. With me? <laughs> no. Let me explain this craziness. <laughs> if you were looking at your knife straight on, and it's dull, you got this, you know, blunt, dang near flat edge that is just not cutting anything, what you want to do is first get a burr on the steel. You would want to make it so that this edge was like this. You'd have to grind into it. If this was my sharpening stone and I cut into it, I started to get a burr. Right. You want to get a burr from the plunge line all the way to the tip. You should see when you look down the knife, and I'll show you this in a little bit, a faint white line here. That's the fractured steel that's making your burr. Burr's on the right. When you see a complete burr, make one more pass so the burr is on the left. And once you can move the burr at will, you've got it nailed. This would be this thing that looks like a candle, sort of bowling pin looking thing. <laughs> That's it. That means you buff the edge and got rid of your burr. That's the basics of sharpening a knife. Doesn't matter what grind it is, doesn't matter what the sharpened edge geometry is, doesn't matter how you get there. Bar, polished edge. You should have a sharp knife. If it's not, well you gotta figure out why. You might have burned, you might have uh, dropped the knife too steep. You drop your knife and it's too steep, you're gonna take that burr off and make rounded edge again. We'll go over that. But first I'll show you how to get a burr on the machine. Stay tuned. Alright, we're back. I'm going to use this. This is a great Plainsman model. Uh, just happened to grab this one. There is zero edge. This knife has never been sharpened. So it's a little different than what you're going to do with resharpening, but you'll see when I get a burr that I'm talking about. You have a dull knife. This is really dull and we'll get the burr, so same concept. If you have access to some sort of machine, uh, this is the way that we sharpen everything here, edge up. I've seen people sharpen edge down. I was taught to do it edge up, and you can see what's going on with the burr, I think a lot easier, so I suggest sharpening edge up. Can you see on the side of this, Michael, we have a flat metal platen here, and then a slack portion, nothing here. If you are going to just resharpen, probably go on the slack part and you'd be done. I'm going to start on the platen because I have no edge whatsoever. Okay. Using this as my steady rest, I'm going to hold it about, oh, not too steep, not too shallow somewhere in the middle, which ends up being approximately, I think, uh, about 21 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'm going to start in the middle, go to the plunge line, and out to the tip. I'm not going to take the tip past the halfway point of the paper, because by then I get down here, I will have been on the paper too long, and they have a tendency to burn the edge. Alright, so there's with just one pass, and see where it's shiny. 
I'll do the other side. I suggest doing left, right, left, right, so you have the even amount of passes on each side. Tell me if you can see this in the camera. See that faint white line right there? And yep. then nothing there, and then a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the burr forming. Now if you got a machine, again, if you're doing it, it might come out that way. You have a little bit of burr, then nothing, then some burr. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll, it'll catch up to having a whole burr, you know, on the plunge line to the tip. And you see now I pretty much have the complete white line burn. Might have to pause the video and eyeball that a little bit. I've got to burr the whole way. Now I'm going to go up on the slack portion and do the convex part of it. So if we sharpen everything with a convex edge, it leaves a little more metal behind the sharpened edge that you're cutting with. Tends to open up what you're cutting a little bit better, it's a little bit stronger little nicer setup. I still have my burr. I have moved it at will, left side or right side, so I know I got the whole thing. Also look at your tip, the very tip of this. Can you zoom, focus on that at all? Okay. Okay, ideally you just want it so the tip of the knife is not like this. You, know, you want it in the center. That's all. Alright, now that we have this burr, we need to buff it off. And you can use a multitude of things. We will go over in more videos. Here in the shop I'm going to use a felt wheel. This is made by, uh, let's see, where do we get these? Uh, Durafelt. Durafelt, that's right. There's four different hardnesses here. There's a soft, medium, hard, and super hard, I think. Very hard. This one is considered hard. Uh, I believe it's .70 on the durometer scale, something like that. Works the best. These wheels, they say you don't need anything on them to use, but we like to use this. Not only does it remove the burr, but it helps polish the edge. The other wheel on the other side is just a cotton wheel that is not sewn. I'll show you when I shut the machine off. Here's a very important safety tip. When you are buffing the edge, you want to make sure you're buffing edge down. Same as if you were using a leather strop. You would never, never strop into the leather. You cut it. You want to drop away from the same idea here. You want the edge down. You see I just made one pass and half the rouge is gone on this one side. This is almost like having two different grits on one wheel. With the grit on there, and I'm not sure of this 100%, but let's just say with the grit on there, it's a thousand grit. As soon as I make a pass and I get down to the felt, now it's like 1500 grit. So it's polishing it a wee little bit more. I'll take a pass on each side to remove the rouge, the grit. Take one more pass without it. Now I'll take two small, two uh, light passes on this wheel. This second wheel here, it's just a cotton wheel not sewn together, so it's very soft, but when you put it on a high-speed buffer, you know, it gets a little harder than normal. It does two things on this knife. One, it takes off the rouge from this wheel, and two, it gives you just a little bit extra polish. But while using both of these wheels, I tend to, although this one's still pretty good, uh, sometimes this tip gets rounded over. We're going to fix that with a 120 grip belt on this machine. Of 
Plus, we got scratch marks going the wrong way since this is a brand new blade. Not pressing very hard. All I want to do is change the lines, the scratch lines, but I've also sharpened up this. If you would take your finger and do this very gentle, now it's like a needle. See, grabbing my skin, it's like a little needle. It's really sharp. Let's cut this off. Okay. The belt that I used on the 2x72 grinder there, this is another little secret. We only use a worn out 120 grit belt. Alright. It makes uh, it's a happy medium between a variety of grits. Being worn out, it's a little softer than 120. Still has a stiff back, that particular belt, so it doesn't flex much and doesn't divot the knife. Works out really good. Now these polishing wheels are what make it just real nice because it's removing the burr as well. This is another secret. Come over here. Always use the same medium to check your edge. If you use arm hair on Monday, Hot Rod Magazine on Tuesday, and a newspaper on Thursday, you're never going to get the feel of the knife. Use the same thing all the time. This is a office catalog, and it's approximately three thousandths of an inch thick. It's pretty thin stuff. Take three fingers and kind of cup the paper a little there. And should cut that pretty effortlessly. One sharp edge from nothing. That edge was probably 25,000 thick when we started something like that. So now we have a completely sharpened edge. The tip is good and the spine will run a fire steel for that matter. We've done everything to it. Uh, we will add some other things with the next video. We're going to go over, like I said, hand sharpening in a field. I know not everyone has access to a shop like this, but you might have access to some of it or your buddy does. This buffer is pretty much the same as what could be in a body shop. You have access to that. <coughs> or a school shop, something like that. That's a little bit specialized, that 2x72 buffer, but you can get the same exact results with a 1x30, like a craftsman type sanding belt. They, uh, there's a variety of grits with those. They're only one inch wide, but they work just as well. There's uh, an item called a Jiffy adapter, I think, that will allow you to change out the, uh, I think it's a 6x42 with a little disc on the side for sanding wood. It's an adapter so that you can run 2x48 belts, which is also pretty common. Uh, that'll work as well. But we'll go over more sharpening in the next video. Good or hairy man on the inside. Thanks for watching.